from Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter The Marriage of Samb, Canto 10, chapter 68, text number 17. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudirae Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Ruttama Shloke Bhakti Rabhavati Nashtiki Krishna Yavasudevaya Devaki Nandanayacha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha Saha Abhivandya Ambika Putram Bhishmam Dronam Cha Bahalikam Duryodhanam Cha Vidhivat Ramam Agatam Abravit So Vivandyam Bika Putram So Vivandyam Bika Putram Bhishmam Dronam Chabalikam Bhishmam Dronam Chabalikam Duryodhanam Chavidivad Duryodhanam Chavidivad Rama Magatam Abravi Rama Magatam Abravi So Vivandyam Bika Putram Bhishmam Dronam Chabalikam Duryodhanam Chavidivad Rama Magatam Abravi So Vivandyam Bika Putram Bhishmam Dronam Chabalikam Duryodhanam cha vidhivad Ramam agatam abravit
माता जीस उद्धव अभिवंद्या ऑफरिंग रिस्पेक्ट्स अंबिका पुत्रम टू धृतराष्ट्र द सन ऑफ अंबिका भीष्मम द्रोणम च टू भीष्म एंड द्रोण बहालिकम दुर्योधनम च एंड टू बहालीक एंड दुर्योधन विधिवत अकॉर्डिंग टू स्क्रिप्चरल इंजंक्शंस रामम लॉर्ड बलराम आगतम हैज अराइव्ड अब्रवीत ही सैड ट्रांसलेशन इन पर्पट By His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Translation. After he had offered proper respects to the son of Ambika, Dhritarashtra, and to Bhishma, Drona, Bahalik and Duryodhan, Uddhava informed them that Lord Balaram has arrived. Purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati points out that there is no reference here to Uddhava offering respects to Yudhishthir and his associates. Since at that time, the Pandavas were staying in Indraprastha. Om Ajnanatimirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Ho Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Nvaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanvitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vishena Maha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Svarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Akhyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha 
पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा बैक फॉरगिवनेस फ्रॉम ऑल द वैष्णवास फॉर ऑक्यूपाइंग ए हायर सीट द डिस्क्रिप्शन इज अबाउट सम पास टाइम ऑफ लॉर्ड बलराम एंड श्रीमान बलदेव दास हैज मेड मी सिट हियर सो आई बिलीव इट इज द लॉर्ड्स डिजायर बैगिंग blessings from all the vishnavas so that something for all of your satisfaction can be spoken hare krishna so this translation is after he had offered proper respects to the son of ambika and to bhishma drona bahalik and duryodhana uddhava informed them that lord balram has arrived as all of us know this that this description is about the marriage of samb lot of marriages in the previous chapters and killing also interesting we have another episode of rukmi the brother of rukmini they are also rukmi never wanted rukmini to get married to lord krishna but then lord krishna kidnapped rukmini and probably he set the tradition for his sons also <laughs> to do in the similar way and later rukmavati the daughter of rukmi got married to pradyumna and that also unwillingly you know he consented to please his sister and then later the grand daughter of rukmi the great enemy of lord krishna rukmi is a great enemy of lord krishna rochana got married to aniruddha so i don't know what is in mind of lord sri krishna he likes to capture all the daughters and grand daughters of his enemies similarly is the case of duryodhana Duryodhana wanted to marry Subhadra and Balaram ji very much very much wanted that uh, Subhadra should marry to Duryodhana as we know that Balaram ji was very much pleased by Duryodhana because of his skill in maze fighting gada yuddha and duryodhana had accepted lord balram as his guru so there also krishna foiled the so called desire of lord balram that subhadra marries to duryodhana and uh, he arranged in a very very inconceivable conceivable way that arjuna comes and there is attraction in subhadra and arjuna and lord krishna knew that balram ji would be infuriated once he comes to know that arjuna is kidnapping subhadra so what he did he instructed subhadra that uh, you hold the reins of the horses on the chariot 
and you drive the chariot. So, it's not that Arjuna is kidnapping Subhadra. It's the other way around. Subhadra is actually taking Arjuna to his kingdom. And this way, when Balaramji saw that and he understood his uh, anger pacified, understanding the desire of Subhadra. And later on, again, now is the episode of Duryodhana's daughter, Lakshmana. Now, Lakshmana is also in Swayamvara never wanted to marry Samba. And uh, the episode is here, Samb captured Lakshmana by force and he was so powerful, he could defeat all the Kauravas. But uh, in a religious manner, six Maharathis captured Samb and put him into the prison. So when this news arrived, Dwarka, all the Yadavas were very much enraged that in a very, very illicit manner, Sam was captured by six Maharthis and they wanted to punish immediately the Kauravas. But Balaramji, he smiled in his heart. He thought, anyway, I always wanted some connection to my dear disciple Duryodhana. So now is the opportunity, I will go. He convinced all the Yadavas that don't worry, I am there to sort out the issue. So let me go ahead. And he was, he was very convinced that Duryodhana is my dear disciple. And once I come, he will come, offer his prostrated obeisances. And since I am his guru, out of obligation, he would hear what I would request. But as we know, that did not happen. The present verse, today's verse, uh, is about Uddhava informing Kauravas that Lord Balaram has arrived. So, once this news was heard by Dutrashtra and Duryodhana, both of them were very happy because they thought Lord Balaram is their well-wisher and definitely something good, some good compromise is there. At the same time, they put Sam into prison because Bhishma Dev told them that Sam has already touched Lakshmana. So therefore, no Kshatriya is going to marry Lakshmana. So it's better that we don't kill Sam but uh, capture him and put him into the prison. So, the present episode is about all the Kauravas, they are coming and offering respects to Balaramji. There is a description of uh, Ambika Putra, Dhutrashtra, Bhishma, Drona, Bahalik. Bahalik is elder brother of Shantanu. Uh, actually, the Hastinapur kingdom belong to Bahalik and uh, he had one elder brother also but he did not want to become a king and he renounced and took to ascetic order so that time Bahalik was made the king of Hastinapur but Bahalik thought Hastinapur is not a rich kingdom and therefore he conquered another province called Bahalik and, they, Bahalik and therefore he is called Bahalik. Some Acharyas say that because he conquered that province, that name of the province becomes Bahalik. So Bahalik was also there and he was very, you know, he was eldest of all the warriors on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And it is said that Bhima killed Bahalik. So, uh, Bahalik was there, a very, very great elderly personality and Duryodhana. 
so all of them came to offer respects to balram ji so in coming verses we'll come to know how kauravas offended balram ji by not accepting his request and then balram ji having heard their very sharp hurting words became enraged and gradually using his hull the plow he dig the entire hastinapur and wanted to drag entire kingdom into ganges and kill all of them so this is the episode we'll focus today on some of the important learnings that we can have from this uh, narration the first is that even if somebody is a very very competent disciple and very skilled but he, if he is not having a proper disposition for supreme personality of godhead then naturally he would not be able to offer proper respects to his guru there are many inst- incidences in shrimad bhagavatam where we know that like lord indra the case of lord indra that he became powerless when he offended his guru maharaj and on the other hand bali because of his devotion to guru became powerful and even conquered indra even in case of uh, ravana as long as ravana was very very uh, devoted to lord shiva and did not take to the path of irreligiousness of course he was a religious by nature but he did not uh, commit a greater offense of directly snatching the property of lord ram so when he committed that offense gradually he became powerless so here the description of duryodhana is there lord balram because he is a very very merciful personality very interesting how lord balram is uh, complimenting his uh, own personality to lord krishna ideally when lord krishna appeared as lord ram the responsibility of uh, being just being uh, neutral being uh, equal to all was on lord ram and lakshmana being the younger brother he took liberty to become angry to express his uh, emotions to express his uh, uh, you know heart so lakshmana was that a different character in ram leela he was getting infuriated he was uh, taking side of lord ram and he was passionately attached to the service of lord ram but then we know lord uh, because of uh, uh, lord ram's order to lakshmana that uh, he should go and put sita on exile he could not bear this particular instruction of lord ram and then in uh, dwapar yuga he has appeared as lord balram so as lord balram the roles are reversed lord balram is taking like ram balram ji is taking more neutral position more just more you know equal position like lord ram was very very uh, in spite of all the advice given by sugriv and others he still welcomed vibhishana like in the past times of lord ram we find many times lord ram brings out a very very uh, higher mood of forgiveness and accepting even the people from his enemy side so lord balaram is carrying the similar mood in krishna leela he is taking a role of you know in a way forgiving the offenders 
trying to create a truce, trying to bridge the difference between Yadavas and Kauravas and Pandavas. So, the same role Lord Balaramji wanted to play here and uh, he thought Duryodhana would accept his request but did not happen because once you don't have a proper disposition for Supreme Personality of Godhead naturally uh, you cannot have complete surrender and devotion to Guru and being Balaramji as one's Guru is a very very special privilege even when Duryodhana was learning maize from Balaramji he was very devoted but his focus was very different something like Karna Karna also wanted to be a great warrior but he wanted to defeat Arjuna the same way Duryodhana wanted, was a very very wonderful warrior but he wanted to defeat Bhima so because of that animosity competitive mood he approached his Guru just as Karna approached Drona for learning but only single intention of giving competition to Arjuna not for learning the Vidya but learning Vidya to accomplish a selfish desire the same way Duryodhana approached Balaramji to learn maze fighting not just to learn the Vidya but to defeat Bhima and naturally when this intention was there although he pleased Lord Balaram but his other intention got revealed later the other intention was to marry Subhadra because he liked Subhadra he was there uh, in Dwarika and learning mace at that time he had seen Subhadra so he wanted to marry Subhadra and in fact he proposed to Balaramji that if it is possible can I marry Subhadra and Balaramji you know being magnanimous he said oh yes yeah, it's a good thing you are a very good disciple you can marry Subhadra but later on it did not happen so so again the same intentions Duryodhana is having different intentions to become surrendered to his Guru and therefore when Guru is coming in this episode and he actually should be very grateful and should offer everything to his Guru Maharaj but then rather than that all the Kauravas together are offending Balaramji so this is the episode and as we know Balaramji being Guru he chastised them it is said that Tomar Isthane Aparadhe Tare Hari Naam what is that? Sri Krishna Pradhe Tari Hari Naam Tomar Sthane Aparadhe Nahi Paritran Hari Sthane Aparadhe Tare Hari Naam Tomar Sthane Aparadhe Nahi Paritran so when somebody offends Guru only Guru can rescue him only Guru if somebody offends Hari Lord Krishna the holy name can you know deliver him like when we perform deity worship in Bhakti Rasamrat Sindhu there are 32 different offenses seva aparats which are mentioned and it is mentioned there that a devotee should avoid these offenses but in case a devotee commits these offenses holy name has a power to deliver a devotee from these seva aparats but suppose somebody commits offense towards the lotus feet of Guru except Guru's forgiveness there is no other remedy for that offense so Balaramji is chastising Duryodhana and later on what happens Duryodhana comes running offers obeisances and Guru is always merciful Balaramji still could have continued 
having anger and hurt feelings in his heart but then understanding the relationship of yadavas with kauravas he forgave them so this particular episode and many other episodes which are there like we know about lord balram he is uh, haladhar he is also gadadhar so just referring a few chapters behind in this leela he is using his plow showing the power of his uh, you know his power through the plow in the earlier chapter he has shown his power of his fist he killed dwivida simply by beating from his hands and earlier to that he has killed rukmi by using mausal another balram ji's gada is not a typical gada which is carried by hanuman ji it's a different kind it's a mousal it is called mousal so that is he struck that mousal to rukmi's head and that's how rukmi was killed so balram ji also in the case of divida we know that divida committed offense to lakshman ji so later on balram ji only purified him from that offense that leela very clearly establishes that guru only can deliver his disciple if dis disciple commits offense to the lotus feet of guru and there is nahi paritran there is no other way in these past times uh, uh, some other past times also like this past time took place in hastinapur there are other past times which took place in dwarka so in krishna samvita bhakti vinod thakur is describing some hidden meanings of dwarka leela or mathura leela or killing of various demons or different pastimes of lord krishna of course these meanings are not meant for the highest pure devotees of the lord the pure devotees of the lord are simply inspired by love and the, the loving aspect of a pastime is so much charming that the other instructional uh, you know meanings of that pastime are not so much relished by pure vaishnavas they relish it but then they simply enjoy the pastimes like we know the gopis of vrindavan they are very simple cowherd girls so when somebody is exalted in love what happens how does that love manifest that love manifests because of simplicity of heart and therefore saralta ei vaishnavata another name for true vaishnavism is simplicity the simple a person is the more he attracts the heart of krishna and a simple person can enjoy pastimes of lord krishna like you know sometimes we hear the pastimes because uh, i have some different type of analytical intelligence i am not able to laugh so easily hearing some of the pastimes but i have seen devotees simply laughing and i get amazed oh yes they have simple heart therefore they can relish the pastimes but those who are complicated brains they require some analytical hidden complicated meanings so so to address their inquisitive nature and so that they can make more meaning and they can think krishna's pastimes are so perfect perfectly set they are perfect from every angle and there has to be explanation and logic for every pastime and every leela and every shastrik you know presentation so the complicated mind does need that but as one gets purified the simplicity prevails in the heart heart gets purified uh, a devotee does not aspire to find uh, a lot of logical meanings to the pastimes of lord krishna 
He simply enjoys. He sees it as a loving exchange. What happens there? When loving exchange is there, the ras becomes prominent. We have heard about rasas, shantras, dasiras, sakyaras, vatsalya, madhurya. These rasas become prominent when heart is jnana shithila. Jnana shithil means when, when the mood of I have and reverence becomes slackened. At the level, level of inquisitive mind, the tendency of mind is to be very much logically oriented and to understand everything perfectly. And because intelligence is there, uh, there is a sense of uh, satisfaction and pride of learning that yes, I, I do understand the deeper meanings of the pastime. But however, a stage comes uh, where the manifestation of prem appears, then there is no, not so much insistence on knowing the logical understanding of the pastimes. And that stage is called Jnana Shithila stage, where knowledge is there, but knowledge becomes obstruction in enjoying the pastimes of Krishna. Like Mother Yashoda, she completely forgot that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, she was able to enjoy the smile of Lord Krishna, the, when, as a little child when Krishna was walking, she was, she was just getting excited and happy by seeing the, uh, just, you know, little steps of Lord Krishna. The, uh, sometimes, you know, you, you see mothers, they are seeing their children, and sometimes they look at the child's face and start laughing. And I have seen it. And I, I, I wonder, why, why is it happening? You know, what is there in laughing so much? But then, they are, they are just enjoying that. The little child is there and the, the mother's heart is full of love and they just enjoy. So Yashoda Mata, in her pure sentiment, was completely enjoying the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And because her knowledge was completely obstructed, that Lord Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even in case of Devaki, we know, when Lord appeared in 400 Vishnu form, Vasudev Vichar, after taking the darshan and offering prayers, she requested the Lord to assume a little child's form. The reason was, she always considered, her feelings were of loving, loving feelings for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, being in Vatsalya Ras. So when Lord appeared in opulent form, Although she understood this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but her heart could not find any connection, a relationship. She was wanting to enjoy the rasa of the relationship. So as soon as hearing her request, Lord Vasudev assumed a little childlike Krishna form. What happened? She immediately lifted Lord Krishna. He started caressing Lord. It is said that she also fed her breast milk. Of course, Acharyas give different, you know, explanations. The real Krishna first took the milk of Mother Yashoda. So, this stage is important in understanding the pastimes. But at the same time, we definitely have to know what, what is the logical meaning. What is the understanding? So it is said Dwarka. Dwarka represents the abode of regulated devotional service, Vedi Bhakti. Mathura represents the abode of spiritual knowledge. And uh, Vrindavan or Braj represents the abode of pure love. So when Lord Krishna is in Vrindavan, Actually, Balaramji and Lord Krishna, both of them do not carry any weapons. Balaramji does not carry hull or musal. 
he carries a buffalo horn and sometimes he carries a, carries a little vamshi. And Lord Krishna never carries any weapons, he carries only the flute. But whenever Lord enters Mathura and Dwarka, then definitely he carries the weapons. So in pure, in land of pure love, Vrindavan, there are no disturbances. There are no offenses. Nobody commits any offense in land of Vrindavan. Because all of them are perfected devotees. Their love is completely mature for Lord Sri Krishna. But the same thing is not found in Mathura and Dwarka. In Mathura, Mathura was captured by Kamsa. And it is said that Kamsa is symbol of atheism. So even spiritual knowledge of a devotee gets covered by atheism. When? When does it get covered by atheism? It is said that Kamsa married Asti and Prapti. It is said Asti and Prapti, they are daughters of Jarasandha. So Jarasandha is, is said to be a representation of fruitive activities. And uh, surprisingly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains in detail. So it is said when a devotee who has pure spiritual knowledge gets inclined for fruitive activities, then his spiritual knowledge gets covered and then he becomes interested in the, the, you know, the daughters of fruity activities, asti, prapti, they get married to Kamsa. They come and they become, they become the rulers of the land of knowledge. So similarly in Dwarka, Dwarka is a field of regulated devotional service. So sometimes we see the pastimes of Semantak Mani, bewilderment, how can it happen in land of uh, Lord Sri Krishna, where Yadavas, who are the associates of Lord Krishna, are residing? But actually, as long as we are on path of regulated devotional service, Vaidhi Bhakti, different attractions and different disturbances will overcome. The disturbances which come in land of Vraja or Vrindavan are different. When demons attack land of Vraj, Krishna is there to save them. It's a totally different level. That disturbance is not because of the devotees or within the devotees. It is an outside disturbance. But in case of Dwarka or in Mathura or in any spiritual society, Disturbance can come from within. As long as we are on path of Vedi Bhakti, the disturbances will come. And many times, the disturbances come from within. And therefore, these pastimes are there which indicate to us that even though we are on path of devotional service, offenses or mistakes committed we will have to reap the results of those mistakes and offenses. It's not that devotee is forgiven, but a different law of karma acts for a devotee. There is a normal law of karma for every living entity. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. But in case of devotees, this law of karma gets modified. It's on a higher level. And therefore, Acharyas do not call this law of karma like a normal karmic reaction for a devotee. But reaction is there. What is the difference in law of karma for normal living entities and for a devotee? In case of normal living entities, sometimes we see that a person is committing lot of sinful activities, he is very offensive, very disrespectful, of a very degraded nature, but immediate, immediately does not, you know, suffer the reaction of those activities. 
we don't see sometimes we see some rich person or somebody who is of that nature continues to enjoy his position power prestige whatever the reaction comes later it may come in future lives it may come later in some other lifetime but it has to come so that law of nature is very complicated law of karma is very complicated when and how it will come for a normal living entity uh, nobody can understand but in case of devotees a devotee who has taken shelter of his guru we all know that guru maharaj accepts the sanchit karma of a disciple at a time of initiation so in one sense whatever sinful activities are performed a devotee is forgiven however devotee can suffer the reactions of his aparad or mistake not in future lifetimes but in this very lifetime sometimes uh, within a few days sometimes instantly as krishna decides so krishna has modified in this manner the law of karma for devotees he the law of karma does not extend to future lifetimes but that is executed in this lifetime so this is the difference in case of dvida it appears that it got extended to another lifetime because it is said the offense to guru cannot be rectified by lord krishna so the law of karma for devotees which comes under purview of lord krishna gets executed in this lifetime but if somebody commits offense towards guru then the reaction or rectification may happen in future lifetimes so uh, the instruction to us is that even as devotees we need to be very very careful we need to be very very uh, very much in mood of humility and always remembering the instructions of guru maharaj then we will remain protected and uh, we will be able to make advancement in this life and our life will be perfect hare krishna hey. if there if there is any comment or a question or any clarification or any rectification of anything is said please hey krishna anyone would like to say anything shila prabhupada ki granth raj shrimad bhagavatam ki gaur pramanandi hari hari krishna